Um, another one. Usually. Did she say here? Yes. Okay. Um, I do have more pens and pencils over here if you need okay, one. Great. Do you want a pen or a pencil? Either one's fine. There's one of each. Okay. I'll take these over there. Carter, here. Dubrovic, is absent. Is it Isle or Eel? Eel. Eel is absent. And Snyder. Here. Right. So I do have one correction to the agenda. Um, I had put the May 28th notes, but that meeting didn't actually take place. So as you saw in the packet, there's two groups of minutes that you're approving tonight, um, May 9th and June 27th. Both are from 2022 is a regular and a special meeting. Quinn's here. Oh, okay. And there's Quinn. Yeah, yes. <laughs> All right. I did the same thing. <laughs> I know. I switched up the seating order. Mike didn't tell me there was a signed seat. So. <laughs> That's fine. So yes, um, it's the June 27th and May 9th. Of last year. Of last year. Shame on us. Do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the months as stated? So moved. Second? All right, so my number one was Angles. Is that correct, or was it Dubrovic? Sorry, I didn't see. Yeah, do I have a second? We need yeah. a second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approved. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have public comments, except for the comments on the public hearing the work applications. Any public comments? I see none. Next item is new business <coughs> construction application for addition of lean to on garage and new roof on existing and new at 316 East Cass for William Crowell. That's me. I, I gathered as much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. You're, so, as it. for you can, from my report, you can see that Mr. Crowell is asking to replace the current shingles that are on the garage with a new decorative metal roof that is blue, which I included those colors in there as well for you. You can see a couple of pictures that I took of the garage, the current condition of the shingles. They are starting to come off and are needing replaced, as you can see. So there's actually two different um, State of Michigan Historic Preservation the surveys. His garage was originally listed as 316 and a half. It's now just one lot at 316, but I included both of those descriptions for you guys in the packet. Um, this is considered a contributing site for the historic district. And as you can see, there are other metal roofs that we have, this district has approved close by, some further away, but within the historic district as well. And we do see that it would be an improvement to the site. Do you guys have any other questions after looking through the materials? I can pull them up here. I have the packet as well if you want to see any other documentation that was included. I'm looking at you, Gwen, because you never have no questions. <laughs> <laughs> The garage doors, I think, are original. If you look at the picture that I took, you can see that all is still there. Did I not see it? What color were you looking to do for the roof? Blue. That's Blue that's in the yeah. pictures? It's almost the same color as what it used to be. Yeah. The house used to be. Oh, the house was painted blue. The house used to be blue. I painted it white. Got it. So Got it. Thank you. It's this Hawaiian blue on your screens there. Okay. You can see a picture of it. Apparently, and this is a very specific type of paneling that they use when you look up the site. Would you say? It's a very specific detailed um, metal roofing that they use when you look up the site of the company that makes them. They're very proud of their style of metal roofing. What about the home itself? What's that? What about the home itself? Those shingles are in perfect condition. They're still good. Yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. 
I actually like them. They're very detailed too. The shingles, it's the asphalt. <coughs> William, I've got a quick question. I'm, I'm a little familiar with the location. The garage is off the alley side, correct? Yes. You've got you've got some big trees there, don't you? I have one big maple in the back corner mm -hmm. that, uh, where the lean-to is not going to be able to go all the way along the garage. Got it. I'm going to have to keep it up because I don't want to cut into that at all. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you're going to leave the tree? Okay. Got it. It brings great shade. My whole backyard, my, like, 2 o'clock is this beautiful shade. Good. And it's basically a playground for my daughter. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Now, what's the lean-to? I'm confused about that. Where's that going, and what is that? Going um, off the side of the garage towards the yard. So it'll just kind of, it's the side. a driveway right now, a part of the parking of driveway, and the lean-to will just cover right next to the garage. So it'll be on the other side of that. Oh, so it's like a carport? Carport. carport. Oh, okay, carport. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah. And it's going to be on the, the, be on the inside of your property? It's on the inside. Because yeah. the, this side would be, that's the alleyway, so he couldn't go towards the other direction. So it's going to be on the opposite side of what you see. Oh, okay. Carport sounds a thousand times better than lean to. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> questions, anyone? Comments? Questions? Anything? Well, what is the life of the roof of the house? I mean, the only thing is in the historic district. You, I mean, it's it's not original to the house. So where it's where it's a it's a nice roof. We've allowed multiple in the district, you know, to match that. But then it doesn't match the house. You know right. what I mean? And a lot of our job is continuity within the pro within the properties. You know. Yeah. Um, right. Neither does ours, Gwen. <laughs> I, I know, but yours is off. Yours is in the alley. No one yeah. sees it. His is a corner lot. Right. You know what I mean? It's also behind the house on the alleyway, the garage mm -hmm. So it's not off like the main site. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying on the corner, they consider it like for fencing two front yards. Mm -hmm. So your garage is actually another front yard side. You know what I mean? As far as visibility, yeah. that's where it's more when it's a corner lot than when it's mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the block. And yeah, you no know, one sees it literally unless they're in the alley, yeah. you know? But everyone around, can, not from the very front on cast, but the other views, you can definitely see the garage. It'll be nice, you know, that, that roofing will be nice. I'm just curious how long the, like the other roof, you know, not, not that you want to change your roof, you don't need to change, obviously, right? No, no, it's probably got at least yeah. a good 10 years left on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So at that point, would you plan to have it match? That point, yeah, definitely, yeah. I like the metal roofing, and I would definitely do that on the house as well. Longer lasting product, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I think the metal roofing is fine, but what I'm curious is, do you have any drawings of what that carport, did, did I miss, like, drawings, drawings of the carport? Yeah, I, I, I did drawings of it. Oh. Oh. Is it in here, or did I, I miss it? I didn't see it. Any. Yes. So I did not include, and they were part of the building applications, oh. so I apologize the for that. The building permit. Maybe just the at a different permit. angle, kind of just different one, angle. Yeah, just one like plane. Yeah. 412, the angle on it. Okay. Uh, okay. To just below the roof What's line. That? So it'd be like a right shed. That, yeah. So, so that shows that he's coming in. Oh, okay. Do you want this copy yeah. instead? Yeah. And what I want to do is match so the angle okay. and do a uh, wood front. Like it's going to be open, but just have a wood front so where it like matches the garage door and still looks like part of the garage. <clears throat> do you know? I think I'd like oh, yeah, to see what the... Yeah, what it looks like, the carport. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the metal roof is fine, and we have approved several of those, you know. Yeah. I understand the concern, too, of matching. Yeah. I definitely do. And yeah. I appreciate you recognizing the fact of not having to do it, so I don't really want to do the house yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. When time comes, yeah, definitely I'll be matching the garage. <clears throat> I've been yeah. doing nothing but improvements on that place since I've been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been fun. <clears throat> Yeah, the building review of the site plan was already completed, so adding this on is not, it's in, already in, what's the word I'm trying to think of? He's not breaking, like, he's not breaking the ordinance. He's within the ordinance to be able to add on to this amount and in that size. Right. If that makes we, sense. With setbacks and everything, because yes. he's going towards a house. Correct. Um, yeah, we just have to be concerned about the... The visual. Aesthetics of it, I guess. That's what we're, this, okay. yeah. this panel That's so what this we're is. So this is a site plan. I don't have necessarily a drawing of exactly what it'll look like. That's what we need. That's what we really, yeah. Okay. Mike's getting the copies of the site plan, but as for what the actual lean-to 
will look like. We don't have like a 3D model or you, render you of that. A, you did just a site plan. Oh, okay. Yeah, a site plan, the size of it, and not a detailed. So, say so like from above, like a bird's eye view. Um, yeah. Okay, we're yeah. we're so curious size, about the setbacks and all that. Yeah. So, um, what it would look like. I could possibly sketch it out something. <laughs> what okay. it would look like. Would you be building that yourself, or would, do you have someone that you are hiring to do that? No, I would be doing it myself. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already have all the material. It's something that's been planned for a while. Maybe two of the same. A lot of other projects. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Hmm. Do I have okay. two of the no. same? I think no. I have two of the same thing. No, Maybe not. I don't know. Great. Thank you. So the, the doors to the garage, are those here? May I approach? The yes. Exist, yes. Existing ones are here. Yeah. They're facing Park, Park Street. Street. So this would be the doors up here. All right. And this would be the front. So the wood paneling that goes across to keep it straight, if you can visualize. So the opening going in here to keep that wood paneling going straight across to the angle. So where it pitched down at at the end here, would match up with the wood paneling with the front of the garage okay. so that it connects and kind of makes it all look the same. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, not for me. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -mm. Mark? And the roof material on the lean to, that's going to be the same? Blue. Wood material? Yes. The roof material. The roof. roof material. Roof. Yes. 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 The blue metal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's pretty similar to that house that we approved with the copper one, mm -hmm. the copper metal. Yeah, or the, the copper mm -hmm. metal roof. The yeah. whole copper one down the street. Yeah. All right. Any other comments, questions? I can't think of anything. Actually, I do. When you say wood paneling, do you mean? The same wood paneling there. I, I got a guy that has a sawmill. And he okay. gave me a few pieces when I was redoing the house and had a few. Uh, like the siding? You mean the yeah, siding? The siding. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, cool. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay. And it's just going to be like, an, there's not going to be a door there or anything. It's just no, going to be open, no, like a carport. No door, maybe okay. down the road. And then I'll come talk to you guys when it comes out. Okay. But uh, as of right now, it'll just be an opening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the construction application for addition of the lean-to slash carport on garage and new roof on the existing and new being, I assume, the, the uh, carport slash lean-to at 316 East Cast? Motion? Do I have a motion? A motion. A second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's done. Okay. <laughs> have fun with that project. Cool. Yeah. Now I saw that snow blower out. Are you expecting snow? Yeah. 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 I'm hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please no. <laughs> so is that all you guys need for me? Then? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I think there was a paper that I need to sign. You need to sign one more spot for me. It's part of the building program. last oh. time. If you can just sign and date that one for me, that was all that was missing. Seven ten. Seven ten twenty three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you guys. Take care. Appreciate you. Good night. Take care. All right. We only have one other thing yeah. to discuss yeah. tonight, and that is. This is our first of the calendar year, so we need to appoint, reappoint, change, whatever you would like to do. We currently have Michelle Carter as chair, John Eel as vice chair, and Mark Snyder as secretary. I make a motion to keep <laughs> the current. Oh, that sounds good to me. Let's see. As is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ab Abigail will try to make your workload as manageable as possible on this board as, as I've tried to. Well, thank you. So, Hopefully. Abigail, are you replacing Mike? I am. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mike's retiring. retiring. Mike is retiring. Tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did it already, but that's. Just, yeah. It was in an email. Oh. So Mike has I retired. He was mm -hmm. kind enough to come in and assist with his my first his last meeting tonight. Okay. And we appreciate that. Just wanted to say hi to everyone. So. Yeah. And bye. <laughs> if you would like to come and have coffee and donuts with him one last time, we will be doing that next Tuesday between 8.30 and 10.30. No, 8.30 and 9.30. 10.30. He has to stay for two I hours instead of one. I didn't want them to do anything, and they're <laughs> kind of forcing me to come in for coffee. And That's good. Yeah. If, That's if we good. were not picking up Mike's daughter from the airport, we would join you. Nice. You have to stay for two hours. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And I will be filling in, if Abby ever can't make it, I'll be filling in. My name's John Wallace. I'm the Community Development Director. All right. But I'll just be called in on in a pinch. <laughs> right. So, sounds good. A new team. Next item, old business. We have nothing on the agenda. Item 7, Commissioner Comments. Any comments? Oh, actually... You know, I wouldn't mind talking about that alley that we have. Yes. Okay. It's so, you know, I sent a, uh, one of those, I did the forms, you know, saying about the alley, how it has like a lot of sink, like sinkholes. Oh, almost. report of concern. Yes. And, Which and he, it? it was funny. He's like fixed, you know, and they just simply put some blacktop, which is already, sure. you know, it's up. So what it is, is our alley, I think it's 16 feet wide. Most I, alleys are only 12. Okay, 12 or, mm -hmm. but anyway, it's like. What streets uh, are you between? Between, it's an alley that's parallel between Cass and Chapin Street, north of, I'm sorry, going east of Park Street. And it's, um. Uh, when we did our brick driveway, that half circle drive, mm -hmm. I remember Shepherds had to get an okay. They put like a brick, kind of a safety triangle so the bricks wouldn't start getting loose mm -hmm. and they had to get an okay from the city so I can see where that the alley is actually a little wider than what the blacktop is it goes about a foot and a half on each side mm -hmm. um, but it, it sinks and it's sinking all the way from Park Street going up to Rush Street in front of like Pat Kelly's garage uh, Burton Hines area there's also like a big repair but over the there's blacktop over old cement that has the lines in it that they used to use like I think in the 40s and 50s mm -hmm. Um, and it seems like the alleys below us and above us, which are in much better shape, are concrete. So I just wonder if this, you know, something that it's just it's really in bad shape. Well. And you did a report of concern. I did, and then okay. they just filled like a few of the deepest depressions. But it's almost like it's sinking, and it's even taking my driveway with it. Mm -hmm. So I had emailed you, Mike, about our alleyway because we right. share that exact thing, but I never got a phone call or email or anything back about it because I had heard you, if you can get, like, everybody to agree to dish the cost, they would do the whole, like, resurface it like they did for the Tear Rush Street. You mean just blacktop? Blacktop it. But if you wanted concrete, you could, as a group that's going to help share the cost, can request that as well. Oh. So... Is this okay. city pay for part of that though or it would depend on the situation we would really have to defer to our dpw director owen roberts so i can because it's an old really old concrete underneath request. okay our driveway and used to have that the, like those lines that are about four inches apart and they're kind of angled mm -hmm, and right. um parallel to each other yeah i don't know if or what the city would be able to contribute that would be kind of up to him in similar situations but i know there's been the other special assessments that have done that type of project or work in the past. So. Okay. so would we fill out the form first as like a neighborhood agreement or would they do an assessment and let us know what the cost is before we said sure? I assume they would want to see something saying the neighbors are all in favor before they went out and did a cost assessment and then they would share with you what that assessment came at Okay. And show the cost to you guys. So mm -hmm. I would recommend getting some sort of petition or something with neighbor signatures saying that they are in favor. I'll let Owen know that you guys are working on that. I think that would probably be the best way to start, just to show that you have their support. Okay. okay. So it doesn't have to be a thing formal, something we write out and have everyone sign. Correct. Okay. And just describe mm -hmm. it. But real quick, too, and I, I know one thing Owen would do and we're in the process it would be 
is certainly he would have the city engineers, Prine and Newhoff, take a look at it with him and Ken Payne, uh, you know, to really assess what might be the best way to do it. You sure. know what I mean? And if it's a dangerous condition. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. And, and you said all the neighbors. What if, like, so people that so back up to that, or get as many as you possibly can. can. Okay, yeah. Because um, I'm sure. If the majority is four, then they'll they'll be more likely to work on it. But if you're split 50-50 and half of you don't want to cover that cost, then they probably would not force that special assessment on them. Okay. And they then, would want to see consensus. And then talking about the city, how much they would, you know, possibly, right. you know, put in. Uh, is that like a discussion that's like down the road then yeah you would have that discussion okay. with right. with owen at that point once they assess the costs and see what that would okay. be especially if the if it's starting to drag people's driveways down with it oh right. yeah that's going to so end up being yeah. probably the lawyer in me knows a liability right. situation for yeah. the city to pay for that damage i would think so i will notify him and let him know that you guys are trying to gather a petition and are interested in this and see if he can maybe get the ball rolling with arranging for the engineer to get out there and take a look at the driveways and such while you guys coordinate and try to get some neighbors if you think that they would be on board okay yeah. does Great. that sound like a plan yeah. sure okay <laughs> so i actually have a comment and this is probably well as much my beef as my husband is <laughs> all of the people who park on the tree lawns all the time everywhere just because they're too lazy to park on the street because that would be probably six extra stops and it's getting to the point where it's unacceptable it not only does it make the community look like a ghetto it is it's not safe i mean you can't see with people you know they're just they're just willy-nilly all over the tree lawns everywhere and i understand that there can be a, a permit obtained when there is not street parking available which means in the winter when you can't park during certain times um, on the street then we understand yes okay they can have a permit and during those periods of time they can park on the tree line but not all summer long and not all day long in the winter it's just it's I mean if you look at like the the cities who have done that have done really well the Petoskey's the Harbor Springs the Traverse Cities their historic districts are all nice. They look nice. They don't have people parked all over the tree lawns. It doesn't look like a ghetto. And I mean, we, we're putting a ton of money into our house. I know Mark has put a ton of money into his house. Gwen has put a ton of money into her house. And Anne, I'm sure you have too. It's all the interior, you can't see it. And <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, so we're all side. making these large investments trying to make this historic district a better place. And it looks like hell because of all the people parked everywhere and why is there no enforcement? And my husband complains repeatedly and he basically gets ignored. <laughs> he does, they, they ignore him. And we're getting to the point where we'll start making people listen to us mm -hmm. if it doesn't. So what do we, what can we do? Yeah. How is he that? reporting it or he, I don't know the person okay. he's been sending it he's to. He sent stuff to me, which uh -huh. I have forwarded. So we have a really great new reporting concern on the website. I know we've talked about that earlier as well, but the really nice thing is that you guys can take a picture, put it on the map and say exactly where it's happening. And I will say the squeaky wheel gets That greased. would be probably about 80 you know, cars within three blocks. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's yeah. everywhere. It's, yeah. it's awful. I don't know, I, excuse me, I don't know about uh, today, but I know years ago, if someone requested the tree lawn parking because of a situation similar to what is it in your house, they were required to provide then pay for themselves paved parking areas. Mm -hmm. So, for example, that paved area in front of your house, that's a great example. And, you know, okay, fine, you want to have because of whatever situation you think you've got adequate room you want tree lawn parking you've got to pave it mm -hmm. but then in your case is certainly different because the distance between the curb and the sidewalk is wide enough that a car fits and there are some tree lawn areas where it's just not wide enough well i've even seen people with their driveways empty and they park on the tree lawn mm -hmm. i mean i, I just my too. brain cannot wrap around why people do that 
Um, it's not can't be good for the tree lawns. Um, all right, so you're saying we should do the report of concern route? Is that the suggestion? I would suggest that at this point it is, I would agree, an enforcement yeah. issue. And I think it's maybe one of the things that the police just aren't ticketing as much because they are dealing with other issues. Um, but if the neighbors are all reporting this, it does get more and more attention. Right. It, it, makes sense. Is it possible, though? I mean, because it kind of, like, makes us, you know, like, um, be like the police, you know, and reporting all these things. Couldn't there just be, like, a little warning thing that maybe they could just slip on the windshield, um, you know, when they see this? I mean, that might just be a good start. And we then can we request don't that with our enforcement police department. Just making you know, all ordinance, blah, yeah. blah, blah, you know, please, you know, you can't, you're not allowed or can't, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. We can request that. Okay. Thanks. All right. Any other comments? Well, sure, I have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, <laughs> but I do. I will tell you, it drives me crazy because this is not our historic district. At times when we, or when we were coming up with the historic district, there were also the discussions in the community about the fact that, for instance, Traverse as kind of a the next nearest community, it is larger than us, but you know, it's like, oh, what are they doing? Because they have like, I think four historic districts, you know, but each district has its own ordinances that apply because of the, the, the difference of um, whatever's going on in that district, you know? So like a downtown uh, city historic district of like the old downtown historic uh, businesses on like Mitchell Street here is different than our neighborhood historic district. So that had, I know, been bantered about at one time or another in the past of, well, do we make a second historic district for the downtown businesses or not? And it, at least here in Cadillac, we started with what we have right now. But in that downtown historic district, I mean, it's clearly uh, still important for our, you know, for our economy that the town is appealing. And it's like, what is that pizza place? The thing beside the Blue Heron. Is that BC? Pizza Plus? Is mm, it pizza Plus? Pizza Plus. Pizza pizza plus. plus. That thing is the same appealing lead-based paint that's been there since I moved here 22 years ago. And they have not painted it once, much less scraped it. You know, all they need is one lawsuit of, you know, somebody who supposedly has a kid with brain damage or <laughs> whatever from inhaling lead. I'm surprised they have never, it's never been addressed. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that those that own that building, I'm not positive, but I think I know who the owners are, can afford to do a paint job and can afford lead remediation. And that's a blight thing in itself. That's horrible. And that has nothing to do with the historic district. That's just basic civility of your neighbor in downtown you know, that you let the place run down, you know. That would be a property maintenance code violation. Yes. It can be writable. Yeah, so something like that, you know, those things, particularly in the downtown business district, um, you know, I, I'm sure it's difficult for the downtown businesses. I'm sure they carry more tax there on Mitchell Street, you know, for having the storefront, et cetera. But they also have their own issues to deal with, with needing plowed sidewalks and whatnot and dealing somewhat more on the city infrastructure. But, you know, they're an integral part, those businesses, in uh, the face of the community. So, you know, we're doing our part in the neighborhood, but they have to do their part at down there, downtown too, you know. So that's just one example, because that one just is always, I remember a new person coming to town saying, I used to be scared driving through Cadillac until I figured out, oh, this is weird. That's just how Cadillac does things. One building's nice, the next one looks like it's in the middle of a ghetto, you know. And that's completely, it's really unconscionable when you, when you know certain owners can afford to take care of things and they don't. So Because they know they don't have to. Yeah, because they can get away with it. Is there, what can we do to just, I mean, if, if it is a, a, I mean, it's got to be some sort of maintenance requirement that that would be citable so that after 20 years, somebody can repaint their, their building or Probably be told. A, a letter to the city manager asking for increased enforcement of our property maintenance code. Because there is a code, correct? Yeah. Already. It's just not being, again, back to enforcement. Well, and identify yeah. that particular building. Yeah, as an example, it's not the only right. one that has not sure. received maintenance. Or maybe they do on the street side, but we also have a significant amount of our city parking is on the back side of those buildings. So the alley presentation is just as important as the front, frankly, you know, because it's all open to the visual eye as you're driving through or parking to go out and shop, you know? 
The property maintenance code, if I'm not mistaken, and Abby's actually very familiar with it because she's worked with in the past a lot of our rental registrations, and it kind of went sideways during COVID, but after COVID was done, it really picked up. But if someone wants to renew, for example, a, a permit to you know, have a rental uh, in our like residential districts, that's when we can really step in when the fire department does inspections and you know, mm -hmm. apply the property maintenance code. It's, it's a little harder when you've got a privately owned house, for example, that let's say it was my house and I wasn't renting it. It's a lot tougher to enforce the property maintenance code when it's an owner-occupied home versus like a rental property. It doesn't mean it shouldn't be enforced. It's just we say harder to enforce. What do you mean? Why is it harder to enforce? Just because it's private property. Private property versus making an income off of it as a rental. An You're now subject property. to more standards. So is there a specific statute that makes the rental properties the more burdensome in terms Correct. of maintenance? Yes. They have to hold to a higher standard at that point how bad with the housing maintenance code you're almost on the verge of like condemning the property or those types of things to and get them to enforce to comply so i will say with our downtown businesses some are more eager to update and help you know work with their um, historic buildings we do have a lot of businesses reaching out to us right now for assistance with that getting grants through the medc so we are working on programs to help them with those costs to be able to get more revitalization in our downtown that is a project that has been on the forefront and a lot of them are meeting with different agencies so it would make it just a lot more appealing i mean i i'm saying this just very frankly you know we moved i came my husband and I came from California seven years ago. We love it here, but we've we've learned <laughs> this this is what it's like. But you know, I talk to people from down south, and everybody has this attitude about Cadillac, where they don't even really want to stop here. And the um, and they ask, they question me, what? Why are you moving there? And the community is set up to be nice enough to not draw those sort of comments and to to have people want to stop here and i mean it's it's a cute town it has the ability to be a much nicer area and the the most important aspect of that is going to be that downtown area and the pretty historic houses that surround it because most of those people who go through town they're not going off to holly road to look at all the nice houses on the lake they don't care they're coming in to go to the restaurants, to do a little shopping, and park in the historic area, look at the houses, and, you know, it's just, it's not a, it's not a pleasant visual currently. I think the DDA would somewhat agree that we have a lot of movement with our downtown development authority, so if you guys are ever available and want to yes. come to any of those meetings, they do meet quite regularly, but yes, they are an active board moving forward. I think a lot since COVID, there's some different people on the board, board and they are, it's the Downtown Development Authority. So they meet the last Wednesday of every single month. Um, they're part of the group that's helping spearhead the discussion of the sidewalks downtown with the bricks. There's movement right now with potentially mm -hmm. a special assessment to redo those and make those safer mm -hmm. sidewalks. As we know right now, there's a lot of trip hazard. Yeah and people falling and there's a lot of injuries. So um, yeah, I would say if you guys wanted to write something or even attend and, and share that with the D, the Downtown Development Authority, they're also, I think, really moving forward and sharing that vision, talking about getting some design guidelines, standards for the businesses downtown, mm -hmm. whether or not they'll be forced to follow it or it will be a requested, please follow these guidelines to have some continuity downtown. Those are all discussions that are currently taking place there as well it's good to hear we, yeah. we do have a facade loan program too which uh, uh, the city provides up to ten thousand in financing uh, for in a loan without interest and it's matched with up to twenty thousand from a private bank 
at uh, 1% or 1.5% below prime. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you get a fairly low interest rate if you wanted to borrow money to do a uh, facade renovation in the downtown building. Mm -hmm. We have two businesses currently still on that program mm -hmm. right now that have done improvements using that. So, And that's Everybody a program. Contact the pizza parlor. We could maybe ask our downtown development yeah. director to contact them. Yeah, and on top of it, you know, you it, it's just like the gentleman here. He's on a corner lot. you got two front yards guy, you know. That's just how those properties are, are viewed if you're on the corner and, and have to be treated as such, you know, that it's going to be an impact on the drive-by, not the backyard in the middle of the block. But it's the same in the, in the you know, in the business di district as well. So, and, you know, those buildings that are fine on the front and then hodgepodge on the side or back or worse, just ripped up, you know. Um, it's just, you know, would be great if those things could be cleaned up. We're not talking major construction renovation, just cleaning and basic paint. You Being know? proud of our downtown. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does anyone know if there's anything like, they, there's something in some states called the Mills Act, which is the, uh, and we had it in our historic district, and, but it's, it was a state law, and it allowed for people who entered into the contract with the city to have a reduction in property taxes in exchange for an equivalent improvement of the exterior of their home every year. And, there, and of course the city did a big study on it because they were worried about losing property taxes, but what they found was that actually no, it was an Im economically an improvement above just collecting the property taxes because it was sending people out to the Lowe's or the, you know, not Lowe's, but the Home Depot, the Ace Hardware, you know, local places uh, to do, you know, buy materials to do work on their house, hiring people locally to do work on the house. And the houses got better and better and better and better because people were, incentivized to put money into the exterior it only applies to the exterior of the homes is there anything like that i don't know of anything at the state level um but we currently here at the city have been running a residential facade grant program okay um, we're in the second year and based on our totals we've um we've put twenty five thousand dollars in two years into residential facades here in our community so if you look around there's been a couple projects um, on East Garfield, there was a house that was just painted, that entire exterior, that was one of our bigger projects that have been done this year. So um, I think the city sees the value in it. I don't know that there's anything at our state level that we could implement like that, but we are. It would be good to know. Do you, could, yeah. you, could you look <coughs> and the city, see? The city did adopt <laughs> a rehabilitation <laughs> district and a revitalization district. And I think there is an ability to get tax abatement for improvements, but I think you have to maybe invest, you know, in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand dollars to to get that tax abatement for the oh. uh, facade renovations. Yeah. No, this was sort of a quid pro quo. So if you if you had a reduction in your property taxes of well, I mean, the property taxes there the rates were lower, but the amounts were so much higher. I mean, our taxes in a year would have been twelve thousand dollars just without the abatement, and then with the abatement, it was four thousand. So, but we had to every year document that we had spent $8,000 improving the exterior of our house and somebody would actually come out and inspect it or, you know, not every year, but, you know, present photo documentation and it had to be on the exterior. And it, like I said, it, it, it makes a huge difference in the appearance of the community. If something like that could be be done and then if somebody didn't do it contract is terminated and they're they owe the taxes um, do, you, do you mind looking into that could you yeah I can try and okay. see what I can find yeah that would um, be great just to talk about it right that would bring a lot of benefit and it would and it would raise the property values so it would more than offset the eight or twelve thousand or whatever per so you're year. saying you guys would want to implement this within the historic district i i think that well great. that's where we've seen it it's only been in the districts i don't i that the city i assume the city could do whatever it wanted to do but 
the thing is is that there are so many people in the historic district and truthfully the surrounding areas they just can't afford and the houses are falling into disrepair because they can't afford it and they can't pay the taxes they can't pay the mortgage and they can't fix the house up they have to choose mm -hmm. and if there is some relief then yes yeah, so maybe somebody can paint their house maybe somebody can afford to replace some rotting wood maybe they can replace some rotting windows right. it, it just it does raise everything and we watched it happen in a historic district that was it was awful it was it was blighted and within I mean it took a lot of years it, within 20 years the houses were selling for I mean they were beautiful it was a it's a beautiful historic district now there was a couple that took advantage of the program Abby's talking about that redid a front porch. Yeah, but that's just a couple houses. I mean, if you can do it... Uh, but it looks nice. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But if you can do that on a larger scale, imagine the difference it would make in that, in our area. Right. Yeah. yeah, and we can do the research on it, you know, how it would be enforced and you know right and I can all of those questions that. are going to be yes. you know the next the right. next step but we can see if there's something at the legislative level that could be used and then that conversation can continue down the right line. and then even if there's not something at the state level if it's something the city could do on its own it's possible I would think I don't know but I would I think it could be either. yeah well we will be looking um, at extending the residential facade program we have going right now um, right now it's being done under the benefit of uh, cons uh, consumers uh, energy uh, grant funds but we're going to be um, checking with the council to see if they will continue it out of city funds mm -hmm. and so it's a possibility that we could look at that program to be you know done differently in some fashion right Okay, and then you can, I mean, if you need my help, I have a legal background. I've been president of historic districts with very sophisticated property tax abatement programs. Right. So I can help if, you know, if it's something that's yes. feasible. Yes. I hope it is. Okay. All right, any I, other comments? I oh. do have one more. Okay. I'll keep this short. But um, <laughs> this is more of an aesthetic thing, but, you know, it seems like most cities, like in the old neighborhoods where there's an alley, and I think some of our alleys are in, you know, such bad shape, maybe that's why they don't do it, but the garbage trucks. Historically, most of the kitchens are in towards the alley side. I mm -hmm. mean, that's just, and everybody put their garbage cans in the alleys. They do that in Travers. Um, and I guess what bothers me is, you know, it also would be easier for the garbage pickup because they wouldn't have to go on both sides of, like, uh, Cass Street, for example. Um, you know, so if they went down one alley, they can do a whole block, you know, each side. Um, are the alleys wide enough for the garbage trucks? Well, that's, that might, might be an issue because yeah. the garbage trucks are a lot bigger now, I, mm -hmm. and I realize that. But it does come down our alley because we have, like, one place that doesn't have road frontage just maybe alley that's why frontage. It's sinking. yeah <laughs> yeah, then, yeah oh then maybe we should yeah oh well to call that you know but the other thing that aesthetic that really bothers me is a lot of these people leave their like those big glue blue garbage you know plastic sitting things out. sitting out for days days are it's, like, it's it's a permanent fixture in front of our neighborhood yeah, and i don't think that's they right just, they, I, they, I just they just don't. and we look at it we're like okay so <laughs> you can go out once and drag your can in and then just stick your hand out the door and drop it in but no they take their trash out to the street their steps every the single day. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just I do know at one something. point they were they had stickers that our code enforcer did have stickers to put on the trash cans to tell them like get these off or you'll get a ticket or something like that. So I can ask her if she's still doing that. Yeah, but we, I know that that was a discussion either last summer or the summer before because they were Okay, trying to get people to take them away from the street because then the wind comes, blows it over, and then they're rolling mm -hmm. St yeah, st through the street. Over. So. Yeah. Right. And again, on Cass Street, that's like a main right. thoroughfare, you know, getting downtown for, for people who aren't even from here. And I just, I just think it looks, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and then, do you guys have to do something? I mean, do you take everything down your steps? To us? Yeah. Are we just, it's in or the is, is yours in the back? Yeah, it's in the back. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. 
In your kitchens in the back, I bet. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. See, that's just the way it was. Well, built. It was well thought out back then. Mm -hmm. Yes, and probably did not have as large a garbage can trucks. I, <laughs> I'm sure. All right. Yeah, with all the cars, I can't even imagine a garbage. Oh, and it's also a safety on. issue too, because cars have to pass that garbage truck on like Cass Street. I mean, I've seen it, you know, because I live, you know, right there. Yeah, right downtown. Okay, that's it. All right. <laughs> you, you think we would have gotten together before this? I mean, it's just. Yeah. But we're anyway, done. No. we're done bitching. We've yeah. Got yeah. An entire seven months. <laughs> yeah. Bent it up like. <laughs> so in seven more months, I'll give you an update on all. <laughs> we're breaking. We'll in. do. <laughs> okay. All right. Public comments. There's nobody here. It's a here. great discussion. It's a great discussion. It really is. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Second. 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 Third. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.